Hello, everybody. Welcome to Cub Chat Live. I am so honored to be on the show today. I wasn't here last week, but you know I was watching. We got to um, announce some really big, cool news, and we're going to talk a little bit more about it today. We're going to talk about something that you guys are saying, hey, we want to talk about this. We're joined, of course, again, luckily, by Audrey. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Audrey. Thanks for having me. We're super pumped. So we're kind of talking about the, you know, like, why we do what we do, how do we make these updates, how do we guys include all of the input we're getting from families of today, and we're delving into this to the numbers and the stats, right? We are, we are, we're gonna do that. Yep, the Cub Chat, it's the data and research episode, which I know our audience loves. You guys always have questions and comments, so I'll be doing shout outs throughout the show. Um, if you wanna catch last week's show, so you're kind of in the loop and know what we're talking about, we put all of the Cub Chat episodes up on scoutingmagazine.org slash Cub Chat Live, or you can watch today. You're going to get a good idea and then go back and watch last week's episode. Both episodes will stay up on our Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching after we're live. And without further ado, I think we should jump into this. If you guys have questions, feel, fr feel free to drop those in the comments. We'll probably address them towards the end of the show. Um, shout out to PAC5092 and... Hannah's asking if you can enable captions. We have captions enabled, so just make sure you turn on that closed captioning wherever you are watching right now. Audrey, I got a, I got a big question. It's a big, broad question. How do you get to where, where we're ready to roll out something like uh, program updates for Cub Scouts? Like, what, what goes into it, and like, why do we do it? Right. So, so we are uh, very excited to be here today. This is a little bit of the background information and kind of the, like you just said, why, why we did made some of the decisions we made. Um, what it, it might not be as ex exciting or easy to get, you know, whoo about as last week's show, but um, it is a kind of important to understand. Um, it is what we're going to go over is a sampling of some of the data that we've collected. We've collected more, but this is just to give you a good understanding of how some of the decisions were made. And I just want to thank everybody, uh, all den leaders and, and helpers for their service to, to Cub Scouts. It's, it's just treasured and it's been it's so wonderful. But when we look at things uh, for the Cub Scout program, we have to look at it for today's families. And what do today's families need and how do they relate to things and how do they need tools and resources provided for them? That experience is going to be different than my experience. And it's probably going to be different for a lot of the helpers and folks that have been in for a long time. And we just have to know that that, that was a perfect experience for us at that time. But now it's the new families and they relate to things differently. If you've done any generational information on, 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 uh, the different generations and how they relate to data and people and systems and, and it's it's really interesting and so we're trying to hit our target market to stay relative because uh, if we're not relative we don't have a program so this is this is kind of to set the uh, uh the tone for what we're looking at is as we looked at um various uh sets of data how does this relate to today's families and how can we make our program relevant? And by making our program relevant, we want to make it fun, simple, and easy. You know, that is so true. Quick shout out to uh, PAC116. Thanks for tuning in. I have to say, I'm thinking of, you know, Lisa Wiley, you, Audrey, yeah. and Lisa Anthony. Lisa started this, set the tone for our, our, our decision, uh, data informed decision making. And a uh, huge shout out to her. And then I'm just carrying the torch on oh my gosh you're doing a lot of work don't undersell it but i just want to <laughs> say it is they're not just saying hey we're just listening to the data here i have never heard one of you three ever saying like i think it should be this way i think we should do this that it's not about just like our personal opinion i'm guilty right. i'm in lots of meetings with anthony i'm guilty of just saying i think we should do it this way this makes sense to me these right, and that is are... that is a change, I believe, uh, from from some other methods that have been in place. That that all of us are kind of the first thing we do is when we hear something, we say, "Well, what does the data say?" Because it can't be about my opinion. My my time is sort of past. I may have had wonderful experiences, but I am not today's families with little ones anymore. Mine are now young adults. And so uh, it, it's an entirely different need and different focus and a different way to think about things is just pause and go, what does what the data tell us? And how does that affect our families of today? 
Yes. Yeah, so I think that knowing that we today's conversation, I see some people saying, hey, we're new families. And, and I know that a lot of you guys are longtime volunteers. And honestly, I think the feedback's been really great all around. But I encourage us to frame these conversations thinking, hey, if your gut is to say, like, I don't like that, just know that Lisa, Audrey and Anthony are looking at the numbers all the time. And there are there's a majority percentage saying they want it certain ways they need it certain ways or they engage with the program when it's presented in certain ways so you know just imagine all those people who'd be saying the opposite if we you know right forever right and we all have our own opinions i mean i may not even love some of the new things that some folks uh really need right now but that doesn't matter because th that's not who we're serving we're serving the young families and that's and um yeah that's what we need to do well, I see some people in the comments saying, well, we're not getting the data. Well, let's roll into the data. Let's give it to you today. <laughs> there we go. Enough chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So first up, we're talking about, you know, where did this, where did this info come from? Where did you get to where we're ready to roll out a new program for Scub, Cub Scouts in June, 2024? Exactly. And so this started about five years ago where we started sampling and uh, the surveys that were already there, and then uh, commissioning new surveys and other data sources, feedback loops, and some outside surveys. So it came from a, a multitude of sources, and I just have to say that they were all professional research surveys. This is not me sending out a question, which would be maybe a leading question where you'd, you'd you know, pull an answer that you want to hear. This is professionally based, done with data analysis, and then we get the re results back and then we analyze that ourselves and see how can we how can we use this information and use it to make it better for today's family. And we did that and the culmination is that we had responses. This is not surveys sent out. <laughs> surveys sent out were actually a much higher number, but responses of 23,000 Cub Scout leaders and parents. So boots on the ground, young families who are who are in the program and they gave us their time and, and effort and information back. Lovely. Okay, so we're getting all this info. I'm so impressed with that 23,000 number. That's like shocking to me. Um, yeah, we were yeah. very happy. <laughs> so, so what are some of the ways, I guess, that we went about putting their feedback in action? Well, we listened to what the parents and leaders of today needed. And so the I think the next slide shows you that um, we found some areas of improvement in the last week's show, uh, which was the the introduction to the new program rollouts. Um, we showed you some some other data, but this is one set of data that um, we asked leaders <clears throat> what did they need from the program, and and then we modified the program to simplify it, to deliver it, and removing barriers to completion. So this was something that came up was our duty to God adventure, um, and we found through the through the research that. The, this was not being conducted in den meetings that they just you can see from the comments on there they they were not uh, comfortable uh, as you can have a variety of reasons folks of different faiths you just didn't feel qualified you just didn't want to do it and so um, we found out that they were being done in the majority of them at home and in Cub Scouting versus other programs the parent can sign off on on requirements and and that is something helpful and we found that that was doing that was what was happening already. Um, so <clears throat> when we updated it, we we updated that as part of the the changes we made. We listened to this, and so now the um, the family and and home reverence um, uh, requirements are mostly home based, and so that takes pressure off the den leader, makes it simpler and easier for them to accomplish um, what they need to do and use their time. So that was one way that we used it from this awards and more survey. Um, that we updated the program. And there are many, many ways. We're only highlighting a tiny, tiny sample. Every single requirement and uh, of uh, adventures, required adventures and elective adventures have been looked at, touched and, and made to be more relevant. So this is exciting. I, I mean, it seems like a no brainer, removing some, some barriers to, you know, helping Cub Scouts complete different adventures. Guys, I am seeing your comments. I'm seeing the tough questions. Keep them coming. We're going to address a few of those at the end of the show. I see some overarching questions. Um, I also want to read all about Scout saying, thank you, Audrey, for saying that you may not always agree with some of the changes, but you're listening to the surveys and the data. That's important. And I respect that. Me too. Me too. <laughs> okay. So 
did you find as in, in this you know five year long process? Did you find any areas that were a bigger focus for the whole program? Well, when we looked at the the, the next slide, I think is we found that the the required adventures really did need a looking at. And um, the required adventure survey was sent out to 36,963 uh, DEN leaders. And I get questions on, well, I never got it. Well, this is a sampling. Like any study, it's going to be a sampling. And it's going to be of uh, those who are registered as DEN leaders in their first position. So if you have multiple positions and you're not registered in DEN leader in the first position, you may not get a study. Um, other ones, uh, they found a way to get it to all DEN leaders. So it's, it's, uh, it just depends on the survey because there were multiple and whether it was a sampling and whether you personally were registered in the first position as a DEN leader. Um, 3,000 people, uh, close to 4,000 people responded with a 10% response rate, which is in, in survey business, that's a really good response rate. So um, folks don't fill out surveys very much and this is, a, this is an excellent response rate. What that led us to is a 95% confidence level that if we did this again, we would get the same data, which is exceptionally high and what we were looking for in all our data before we made these changes. And of the changes that we made, we looked for that um, high degree of confidence that we'd get that back. So so we're, we feel very confident and very good that our data is solid and um, is a great representation. So what we found out, <laughs> which, you know, you, you get this in a lot of, uh, in the, in a lot of surveys, is when we sent out um, the sampling after we'd made some of these changes, whether they liked it or not, right? And the thumbs up, thumbs down. They liked the activities and games. They liked everything about it. They liked the simplicity of the requirements after the updates had been made. They liked guest speakers and they liked making posters, okay? Then you go and you look at what they didn't like. Well, they didn't like anything that was a duplication of schoolwork. They had some comments that were unrelated to the questions. They didn't like guest speakers and posters. So then what do you do? You know, what do you do with that, right? So there are some decision points that you make um, on different things because you've got folks that say they love them and folks that say that they don't like them. So I'm laughing because that just sounds like Cub Scout feedback. Isn't it? Isn't it couldn't it? be made up. I don't think. <laughs> uh, so so there are a few few areas where we, we may not hit everybody's like, right? But we do hit a ton of them with the uh, activities, the games, and the simplicity of the requirements and that. That was a, a very high response there. Any comment that had 10% or more respondents giving this a comment, it was reviewed and usually incorporated. So that's that's something to know that there, if there was at least 10%, we looked at that very seriously and we incorporated it in the majority of the, the um, activities. So we would do a rework. And that's what I said in the other shows that, that when we, we did these set up these new requirements and things, they were tested in, in a feedback loop. We asked for some feedback and we got this response back. And then we would update it or change it if it didn't hit the mark that we needed it to. Um, and one of the first things that showed us was Bobcat, after we had revamped it, we sent out the feedback and it just wasn't good. So then we had to re overhaul it again and, and make it better. So. This is an example of using the data to to refine what you have to get your feedback on, on if you're on the right track and what things still need to be improved. Fabulous. And just a reminder, today's show is about the data and research that went into the update that we talked about last week. Um, but we are going to try to address some of your questions. I feel like the the audience is demanding a question be answered. And I saw this last <laughs> week and I know just like this you know, the, the ice tip of the iceberg answer to this. And Audrey, you may or may not know the answer to this. And so if we don't have a clear answer for you, we will, we will try to get to it. The reason we wouldn't have an answer is because this isn't based on opinion. This is based on data and research and a lot of analysis, but lots of folks are saying, what's the deal with the books? Why aren't we going to get handbooks sooner than June? Have you seen that? that uh, kind of the, the handbooks are, according to the rollout chart, which we'll get to at the end of the show again, they're uh, slated to be there in the spring. Okay. They're so not let us know what follow up you have on that. I, I can just say like, from my perspective, working with the team that kind of is involved in that, it just takes time to produce them. I mean, we kind of find right. this information so and we, work as hard as we can to get right. information. So we've gone through some difficulties at, 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 uh, Scouts, Boy Scouts of America. And the work was not 
able to start until after some of those difficulties had passed. And so it's simply the print cycle. You just can't turn something out in a less fewer amount of months than we're doing. We are actually doing, if you knew all the background stuff and all the work. It's happening a lot faster resources, than it typically would. You would put us up on miracle status for getting this, this, these things done. So, but it is targeted for the spring because we understand about crossovers and um, we understand about, you know, folks, you want to get things going and planning and we understand all that, but there are print deadlines that we are not able to move. And that would be the answer on that one. Okay. Fabulous. Thanks for addressing it. And we can get back to that kind of towards the end of the show if there's more questions. Um, but I echo you. Yeah, you guys are working miracles. I know the team involved. Well, the in team. The, I'm. I'm not. I'm just the spokesperson. You are part team. of that team, and <laughs> and the team that is actually producing the books. I mean, they are working nonstop yes. Yes. on those. This, I promise. This you. is all volunteer, so it's it's actually quite amazing. I'm so proud of them. Yes. Okay. Back to we were talking about some of the areas of larger focus. I think we checked out one slide, then the next slide. I think. Customer. Yeah. So after all that data was was analyzed and put together, this is what the results are. And um, this is these are, this is for folks who haven't seen last week. <laughs> and um, this is simplified Cub Scouts, and we are extraordinarily happy with this chart. Uh, the leaders wanted it in the Den Leaders Line of Sight, easy to understand, simple to deliver the program, and um, and then some other things that we added based on the data and and surveys is that. Um, folks didn't really understand why we were doing certain things. And so everything we have in the required elements are now tied to the um, <clears throat> aims and methods of Boy Scouts of America, and so BSA. And so you you know why we're doing this. We're working on character and leadership. We're, we're, we've got the outdoor focus. We're working on personal fitness, citizenship, personal safety, family and reverence. Those are the most important things we would like Cub Scouts to learn about and in a fun and exciting way. And then there's two electives you can explore and whatever you want, whether that's, you know, conservation or STEM or swimming or whatever it is, um, you can do that. This also makes it super easy for small dens and packs to the, to do activities across all ranks. Um, each one is age appropriate. So they're, they're not all the same requirements. Um, they're going to increase in difficulty as, uh, as the ages increase. So, when we see at the end, we're going to see the rollout chart and each one of these things are going to be focused and, and a little bit dive down into the details on this. But this is what the data led to um, is a simplified Cub Scout program. You have six requirements, two electives. Each grade has its own program. There's no crossovers. And um, so we're quite excited about this. Yeah, I just like how simple it looks and I like how simple it would seem to a new parent who's trying to just kind of understand what does the program look like. You know, the answer could be pretty similar from rank to rank. And I like that. Right. It's great for recruiting, for just explaining to your new leaders. This isn't so complicated. You can be a new leader because sometimes finding new leaders is challenging. Um, all you're, you're doing is six and two, you know, with plot it in the calendar and let's get it done. So. People are clarifying in the comments because people are wondering about how good is the current handbook, you know, something that they should be using. Remember, this is the we're talking about updates that go into effect in the scouting year, which begins in, in June. Right, Andre? Yeah, right. So the, the, the current year program stays the same. We are going to be producing a, a FAQ or frequently asked questions. It should be posted soon. I, I would hope by like Monday. One of the things I will say is um, the current Weebelows um, leaders, the current fourth graders, we would highly encourage you just to work on electives and um, start the new AOL program uh, in, in the new program year, which is your fifth grade year, which would start June 1st or whenever your school's done. So um, I would focus on electives for the remainder of the year for your planning year. Um, and yes, your home, your workbook is, is handbook is great for this year. There will be a new one coming out in the spring for fifth graders because the sole focus of AOL, which we're going to dive into in another Cub Scout show, but this is just the highlight version, is uh, they're going to, to be a standalone program and their whole focus is for going uh, in transitioning into Scouts BSA. So perfect. Help. Okay. Our next slide is... Well, it used to be a quiz, but we've got the answer now, I think, straight up. <laughs> yeah, it used to be a fancy, you know, blank and then, then fill in the answer. But this is just, a, we when we've done this class in, a, in, a, in other 
modes we played a game with this so because it's cup scouts is about games right um so when presented with the updated adventures that chart you just saw saw what percentage of leaders indicated that the activities would be engaging for their den and it was 90 to 95 percent and that was our target we really didn't accept much less than that so we feel with a very high degree of confidence that the folks when they actually get to see the the uh, requirements and do and experience this that they're going to really enjoy it because we tested this with the feedback loop and um and that is what we got so we're very happy with that yeah so that's the updated adventures that's the updated adventures yes which is an Not important this program this year's, and uh, it's it's the new program yes right mm -hmm. that's important distinction Okay, so we, we've covered a lot, but there are also some uh, like nuts and bolts that I think you also discovered. You know, what other data and research do we need to know about? What else did you discover in this process? Right, so we knew Cub Scouts was a, a little confusing and especially Bebo's program and, and those things basically, you, you kind of know if you work in, with Cub Scouts at all. Um, but we also found out through a survey called the Awards and More Survey um, which was sent out to 18,000 parents and 36.5-ish uh, leaders, um, that there were some challenges in the awards. Um, there was a 6.6 .6 response rate, which is still a very good response rate. I, I can't remember exactly, but I think 3% is like a normal. So so this is, this is good. And that we have 95% confidence level that the data, if replicated, we would get the same results. So, so that's a, a very strong finding. What we found is that awards were not driving behavior. Um, of those awards, two thirds of them uh, used them as recognition. So why not make them recognition? That it was not an incentive to do uh, the materials. To, to you, you, you just did them because you're already doing it, which is part of you know what they were started for was to get people to understand, uh, to try to get new concepts or new things that weren't in the program to learn about them and an incentive to drive either behavior or learn about a new concept. And what we found out is that that was no longer happening. Two thirds, it was is it didn't drive their behavior. Um, and it wasn't an awareness issue, which is something I hear a lot is that, well, just do better marketing or better this. No, 50% knew about it. They knew about it and they still chose either not to do it or it didn't drive behavior. So. Um, that tells us that that possibly that was something that we needed to fix that we didn't really think was was uh, it was a kind of a surprise. Um, and so <clears throat> what we found out from that survey was that uh, required adventures have about an attachment rate of about 70 percent, which means you do it, you know, and that's not surprising because it's part of the, the rank advancement program, right? It's required. So that is not a surprising result. Um, elective adventures are between 15 to 25 percent, and and uh, we say this in the last week's show too. It is because there's a, a wide variety, so you're you know you're choosing different ones. So on average, it's between 15 and 25 percent. Awards only had 1.5 percent, which is zero. <laughs> I mean, there was some zero in there, and to three percent, which averages to you know about 1.5 percent. So that is sad if you want folks to understand. The, the concepts of this information or do the behavior. And so we reimagined these awards into a recognition, which is what they were either already being done or um, would give them the opportunity to be seen in the direct line, Den Leader's direct line of sight um, as part of the rank advancement program. So there'd be a higher chance that they could, to, could learn about that information and participate in that information. And okay. that, so that's the goal. Yeah. So yeah, this makes did. a lot of sense. It's mind blowing to think 0% of an award would be earned and that we, that we keep it around. But I, I don't know if this question fits in here or if you know the answer exactly, Audrey, but I've seen this debate, not even just related to these updates, but I hear always like, my kids love pins. My kids love patches. Why are they all becoming belt loops? Do you have any insight there? Uh Obviously, because well, we're turning, we're reimagining these award right. adventures, which I, I get, but we just hear a lot of feedback about belt loops. So I'm curious, do we have any data on belt loops? Well, I can say it's great job that you're in the in the 1.5 percent, and, <laughs> and great job. You know, you you have stretched yourself to to go outside of program to find these things or to do these things or to 
to continue to uh, to get them. But the reality is, our young families don't don't do that. They look in what is the program. They do what is the program. They're coming home from work. They're tired. They just want to pop up what they need to do, do the meeting, and and move on and and be progressing towards badge of rank. And so it has to be simple, fun, simple, and easy. And and if it's a recognition item, it has a chance of doing that. Um, I, there are lots of other ways you can get patches and things from council events and so on. So there, there's there's lots of opportunities out there to still enjoy that as part of your uniform. And if you already have it, nobody's going to tell you you can't wear that. But uh, the new families, what the new families want is everything simple and right in their, in their line of sight and towards the program. Towards so the main. I think two things on that. One, if you guys are having this feedback that you feel like, oh, but we feel this way. You don't have, I'm not, we're certainly not saying don't stop saying, like these surveys, you know, answer surveys. I love surveys. the panda patch. I think it's the cutest ever. Well, but keep but, giving uh, us input because it could be important. But I think as of now, my yeah. understanding is just that the, the patches or, you know, pins weren't incentive enough for people to want to earn those. So which tells us it must not be so important to them that they, hate the belt loops and they have to have the patches it just the data wasn't right. well i mean and that's that. a whole nother yeah. that's a whole nother survey on what was yeah. you know young families want most of them don't want to do any sewing they don't want to you know so they want it simple and easy and and in the program so that's that's really the bottom line uh, on that yeah and I, I you guys are very passionate about this i love i love the comments and you guys are saying respectful so keep yeah, it and up those and are, you can and keep that keep folks and, and they did, did come through a series of, of time that that's that was really important to them but the new families are telling us a different story and so that is what we need to listen to to, to remain relevant to our audience yeah. Well, guys, your opinion is still valid. Keep it coming. Keep, you know, keep answering those surveys, especially if you have kids in the program. Uh, I know some of you guys are also new. So this feedback is great. The questions are great. We're looking at the hard data, which is super valuable. Okay. We only have a few minutes left. This show kind of flew by. Yeah. Um, so if you want to just show the summary slide, this is yeah, so, I so where, 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 like reimagined. Yeah. Um, they, they're, uh, all, all it actually doubles the amount of electives in most cases and so uh, the middle section the co the the middle color is what they look like now um, and it's going to be great for pack planning and for smaller dens so that you can combine ages and, and be able to do say fishing or camping or um, swimming or those kinds of things activities together and all work towards a program elective and and fun and so uh, this has been tested with our outdoor folks and they were able to put together a, a day long program in 15 minutes after being at a, at a conference learning about this. So it is it is fun, simple and easy. And, and they absolutely loved it. And I know when we get this launch that folks in, uh, in at the den level will really, really appreciate it. So that's that on the electives. So to wrap it up where can we find resources as they're released due to these wonderful findings we've just walked through right so so this is the program uh rollout chart and cub chat live is our one of our main uh, focuses to to release information the blue line across the top is uh dates you would definitely want to put on your calendar or at least to remember to listen to the podcast afterwards or look up look it up online uh on the recording we also may be supplementing like today's broadcast is a supplemental broadcast um, during the rest of the time. So you just keep your keep your ear out for Cub Chat Live and and what's going on. Um, there's also we just finished a webinar last night and, and other webinars where we're training council folks uh, to edu or we're educating council folks on the new program so they can go out and do presentations and and have an in person view not just uh, not, not just to sup our Cub Chat Lives and um, there's also uh, uh, various other helpers, commissioners, NST program lead, the the larger folks in, in general areas are going to be able to be educated on this to help out as well. And um, so there are some webinars in January, uh, Cub Chat Live episodes, prime time, where Ooh. it's all the same topic in January, but it's three different opportunities for you to come and, and hear some more information and, and take part in the conversation uh, a little bit more if you're not available during the day. Um, and as we talked about earlier, this in the scout shops in the springs will be the handbooks and the adventure pins and belt loops and all those kinds of things. And um, 
and then for our new leaders, the updated leader specific training and all that. So everything has is a has been planned out and mapped out, and we're just releasing it incrementally so that each section can be educated and ready to go to help to help folks in in place. Um, obviously, then our online tools will be updated too. So it's exciting. It is so exciting. I'm so excited about all these Cub Chat lives. A couple comments I want to address real quick. Justin mm -hmm. is saying this Cub Chat's a lot like last week. Yes, Justin, it is a lot of similar information, but definitely for uh, you know a point, we just want to make sure people are feeling in the loop, like they know what went into these decisions and also just finding out about it. If you can believe it or not, somebody out there, maybe a handful of you yeah, guys it's, it's watching a little this more right detail. now are seeing this for the very first time. So, you know. Yeah, it's a little more detail for those that were interested in a little more detail. And um, uh, repetition is good. So folks really understand and... and um, are prepared. Yeah, people are just learning about this. And Jennifer said, can we get PDS versus webinars for busy working families? Jennifer, again, we roll out this information in lots of ways. Make sure you head to the Erin on Scouting blog and subscribe there. Oftentimes we're recapping what's happening in Cub Chat Lives and webinars. And also all of these live videos stay up after we are done with them. So you can well, always I think like our last slide will have some helps there too. Yeah. This URL at the bottom of the screen so that you can always watch these back on your own time. They have captions so you can watch them on mute if you're sitting in the back of some other meeting. I don't know. I mean, not <laughs> your boss, but okay. What's our last slide? Well, the last slide is is where you can find updated information, the the one source of truth from Ford uh, National. And if you click on that QR code, it'll take you right to it. It is the the program updates section of the national website, and we have a Cub Scout tab. And as we're as things are being released, you can you can get the information right off of there and see what it is. And so some of the things that were uh, we talked about last time, a couple of the charts I just showed you, this the rollout chart and the at a glance advancement chart, those are on there with a little bit of extra information. Um, we should be uploading a frequently asked question, um, a PDF. I believe it's coming. It should be coming soon. Uh, I'm hoping by Monday. And uh, so it's created. It's just whether where it's uploaded, it takes a little bit of time. And so look for that. And, and the main highlight there is we below's leaders, we are asking them to consider using just electives this year to complete the year and then starting the AOL year uh, fresh June 1st. So um, that's that was a, a big question. And we answered it on the freq uh, frequently asked questions. Fabulous, guys. You can pull out your phone, scan this QR code right now. Audrey, we were so lucky to get to have you on two weeks in a row. Is there anything else you want to add before we let you guys uh, let you go and let everybody else go? We have a week off next week. <laughs> yes, it's a holiday, so wish everybody uh, happy Thanksgiving. Um, just know that the, the National Committee is out there working very hard to make it relevant for new families and using data-informed decisions, and everything has been thoughtfully uh, thoughtfully considered and where we're getting a, a 95% um, response to the, the the changes that we've made, which is a really good, really, really, really good response. So just have some some patience and some faith and some know that that this is going to be great when we're, when we're, we're all ready to go at the launch. Very good. Well, we're excited. We're going to keep talking about this. We're going to bring you, of course, all of your um, much needed and much loved Cub Chat Live topics. But we'll be back at this again early December to talk a little bit more about this rollout. You can view past Cub Chat Live episodes at scoutingmagazine.org slash Cub Chat Live, especially if you're just learning this information today. Head there, watch last week's episode. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We will see you. We'll see you in a best of episode next week, and then we will be back the week after that next mm -hmm. that next Friday. Yep. Exciting times. Bye, Thank everybody. You. Okay. Thank bye you. Bye. Thanks for tuning in today. Be sure to catch next week's episode. Same time, same place. And let us know how we're doing at go.scoutingmagazine.org slash rate cub chat. We love feedback and ideas for new episodes. And you can visit blog.scoutingmagazine.org slash Live for all our past video episodes. You can see us live. Except it's recorded. But it was live. Okay, see you next week.